Kate Irish casts her vote at the Durham County Library North Regional in Durham, N. C. On May 8. Jerry Broom AP by Jennifer Rubin Opinion Writer August 30 at 1.44 p.m. in 2016, Donald Trump's electoral coalition stretched geographically from Florida to Wisconsin and demographically from white working-class men to college-educated white women. Almost two years later, though, it looks like Swiss cheese. In Pennsylvania, for example, which Trump won by about 45,000 votes, the latest Franklin and Marshall poll shows, at the moment, both Democratic Governor Tom Wolf and Senator Bob Casey hold comfortable leads against their Republican challengers, President Trump is an essential motivating force in the upcoming midterm elections. More registered voters prefer the Democratic candidate for U.S. House, 48 percent, than the Republican candidate for U. S. House, 39 percent, 2 and 3, 67 percent. Of those who plan to vote for a Democratic candidate are casting their ballot mainly as a vote against President Trump, moreover, the most common reason voters provide for supporting their U. S. Senate choice relates to the president. Only 38 percent of Pennsylvania voters think President Trump is doing a good or excellent job. Meanwhile, Ronald Brownstein describes the openings in normally red territory in the Sun Belt, Trump is intensifying the GOP's strength among older, blue-collar, and rural whites. But his style and agenda are simultaneously alienating younger and non-white voters and straining the GOP's grip on college-educated whites, especially women. The shift toward the GOP among older whites threatens the long-term position of Democrats in a wide array of states across the country's heartland, where those adults constitute a critical mass. You see openings for Democrats in the Texas Senate race, where Rep. Beto O'Rourke, D. Tex, is within shouting distance of Trump cheerleader Sen. Ted Cruz, R. Tex, and in Virginia, thanks to across-the-board Democratic wins turning the state blue. The state may turn even bluer this year, with several GOP House members on the endangered list. As Brownstein points out, the Democrats' mostly likely pickup chances are in the Sun Belt, their best two opportunities nationwide to win Republican-held Senate seats are in Nevada, where Democratic Rep. Jackie Rosen is challenging the incumbent Dean Heller, and Arizona, where voters on Tuesday nominated the Democratic Congresswoman Kirsten Sinema to face her Republican colleague Martha McSally. You can also throw Tennessee into the mix, where Republicans will need to scramble to keep the seat. Brownstein explains, Democrats can now see a clear path to greater inroads in the Sun Belt, centered on persuading more white-collar whites and mobilizing predominantly non-white younger generations. From Florida to Nevada, this November will measure how much ground they have gained and how much they still must cover on each of those critical fronts. Likewise in gubernatorial races, Democrats have opportunities in surprising places outside the Northeast and Midwest, Kansas, Oklahoma, Georgia, Florida, and Nevada. In part, Republicans created opportunities for Democrats by nominating extreme, pro-Trump figures, D. G. Chris Cottage in Kansas, Kevin Stitt in Oklahoma, Brian Kemp in Georgia. Moreover, Republicans are now being called to account for far-right governance that has left states such as Kansas and Oklahoma struggling to fund their schools. CBS News reports, six Republican members of the Oklahoma House who opposed hiking taxes to improve teacher salaries lost their jobs in primary runoffs, adding momentum to a pro-education movement that previously ousted two other GOP legislators and fueled a statewide teacher walkout.
Just as the geographic breadth of democratic opportunities has expanded, so has its demographic reach. Whether one uses 2016 exit polling or more recent Pew Research Center polling to break down the 2016 electorate, Democrats have reclaimed certain white voters. Amy Walter of Cook Political Report explains, what you do see in both in both Pew and exits is a drop-off among white, non-college voters. The exit polls found Trump getting 66% among this group, while Pew put it at 64%. Trump's approval rating among these voters now stands at 57%. So, perhaps this is the group that has soured more on Trump that we appreciate. Moreover, with suburban and women voters generally more engaged, as we saw in 2017, and in primaries this year, Democrats' raw numbers in many swing districts have increased. In sum, Trump has a zombie base for which no new information will sour them on Trump. However, across the country and across demographic groups, the same behavior and views that binds the Fox News saturated set is a turn off. It's among those Americans that Democrats' hopes for a comeback reside.